Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Jim Wilder from Life Model Works, and I'm here to introduce uh, Pastor Ricky and Dr. Julia, uh, who we've known each other now for, what, a couple of years, something like that? Yeah. Yeah. And you folks actually found us when you were looking for a connection to inner healing, inner healing and how that might um, uh, affect the whole uh, you know, church context, I think, uh, particularly when it came to r racial issues. And so why don't I let you folks introduce yourselves in your ministry. And uh, we're really excited to have uh, the prospect of having you there at Transform this year as our sort of keynote event. So we want to get to know you a little bit ahead of time. What, what, what should people know about you? Well, um, we're just so happy um, and delighted to be part of Transform. Um, I'm uh, a pro associate professor. Uh, I teach religion and history, and I'm also a Presbyterian minister. And I'm also the co-founder of the uh, Inner Healing Ministry that my husband and I have, Pop More Grace Ministries. Yep. Hi, and I'm too very excited about uh, being able to spend time with everyone at Transform this year. Um, again, my name is Ricky Moore, and uh, I'm also uh, an ordained minister, uh, not through the Presbyterian Church, but uh, ordained nevertheless. Um, and I'm also a um, senior manager at a at a um, Fortune 1000 company. Uh, telecommunications companies. So that's kind of what keeps me busy a lot during the day. Um, but as uh, Julia mentioned, we both co-founded a ministry called More Grace Ministries. Uh, we co-founded it now about uh, six years ago, shortly after we uh, got married. And uh, that in and, of, in and of itself is uh, an interesting story, but, but and maybe we'll tell some of it at Transform, <laughs> but... Um, but uh, as uh, Dr. Wilder mentioned, um, we've also um, been very active in um, learning more about inner healing, uh, applying what we've learned um, in different contexts, which I'm sure we'll talk some about. And uh, that's how our paths cross with uh, Life Model Works. And so very excited about uh, what the Lord's doing right now. Yeah, that's uh, ex just exciting to be working with you. Uh, Julia, you're a uh, published author and uh, also um, a presenter at international conferences. Tell us a little bit about your personal educational and theoretical background there. Okay, so I'm a bit of an eclectic scholar, I guess. Um, I was born and raised in the Baptist and the Presbyterian Church of Detroit and grew up with all of these questions, uh, especially around segregation. And I decided to follow those questions into a career path. And so I've been a university professor for over 20 years. And I've been teaching, uh, my specialty is African-American religions and uh, studying racial violence. I have lots of theoretical paradigms. Um, I, I like to consider myself a, a theologically based historian because I always ask questions about the presence of God and where he is in the history of America, especially in histories that reveal racism. And so that's been my pursuit to just explore the places where Jesus shows up in very unlikely places in American history and to sort of mine the depths of that. However, because I work at a public university, I'm not always able to do that in a classroom. So lots of my ministry is dedicated to looking at the places where God shows up and heals in the middle of racial trauma. Um, the other thinker I like to sort of move through is Rene Girard, and he has a theory called mimetic theory. And I just use that to sort of tease out places where I see uh, imitation for positive or negative, but that he's not my primary thinker. I love to think with Jesus and the Gospels and just the love of God as we look at racial history in America. Yes, and Pastor Ricky, your kind of theoretical and, and, and basis of 
uh, you know, approaching the ministry uh, is also very interesting. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, so um, I guess a lot of it started um, well over now, close to maybe 35 years or so ago. Um, I had a, um, my, my first wife, uh, was diagnosed with um, systemic erythem lupus erythematosus. And so um, mm -hmm. uh, during that process, I started really pressing in to try to learn more about healing and trying to understand um, how uh, she could overcome that. And that started me down this whole path of pressing in to understand more about health. And it was a, it was a while before um, I really turned to the gospels to really look at what the Lord was doing and getting um, an understanding around healing and health. Um, and, um, you know, my, my first wife, she passed away, but um, that desire in me to still understand healing and health and wholeness and um, restoration was still a driver in my life. And um, so it, it pretty, marked, pretty much earmarked the ministry that God and the path he had me on for uh, the last 30 plus years. And um, so when uh, Julia and I met, um, she uh, spent some time listening to the Lord about what um, he wanted us to do. And she was very instrumental in uh, ensuring that I pressed in and asked God things like, okay, what did you talk to me about 30 years ago around health and wholeness and ministry? And um, over the process of time, that kind of resurrected all of that activity with us and out of that more grace ministries was birthed and one of the things that we're very uh passionate about is teaching people who they are in christ um understanding the grace that god has um given us and how we can live life to the fullest and um there are a lot of different things that we bring and tools that we bring to the table with that because the lord has been since we've been married we've we've done a i don't know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of training and uh and uh inner healing uh type training not just for others but for ourselves we spend a lot of time on ourselves and um so yeah so that's our focus is really around healing, health, and wholeness. And as a result of that, you know, we started birthing into things like peace building and um, things around how to help our community um, live better together. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of where we are right now mm -hmm. through all of this. And I, I, I will say that face-to-face -face ministries was really the another wonderful moment where the Lord led us to deeper modalities of, of healing and to your work, Tim, or Dr. Mm -hmm. Weller, um, in, in terms of what the brain can do when, with the presence of God in the midst and how healing can take place. And for us, that was a huge missing link that we were able to incorporate, especially as we address the communities that we are called to, which is really African American, it's all communities, but specifically the Lord has placed us in African American communities who have deep legacies of racial trauma and uh, brain science is, and, and the Emmanuel approach is just transformative in, in the work that we've seen the Lord do uh, in those communities, so. Well, that's the wonderful thing about seeing that how our identity in Christ is both a community identity and an individual identity. And on top of that, it is a God-informed identity. And so, um, you know, in terms of this Transform Conference, which is coming up ahead of us, uh, my perspective was that uh, 
what keeps us from being who we uh, were meant to be, uh, from assuming our identity, sort of has three major contributors. One is uh, that we may not have the brain skills we need in order to know who we are fully. And so uh, if we got to bring some training for brain skills, that's usually not a part of the of the formula when we're thinking about it, because that's kind of new to our, our thinking. Then the second element is we need some healing because we've had damage to who we are by the traumas of life. And so we need God's presence uh, to bring us back to, a, a, or even for the first time, into a vision of who we were meant to be. And then there's our group identity that often informs us incorrectly of how we are to relate to others. And especially when we think about the, the racial issue in the United States, all three of those uh, are part of the element. And so uh, trying to bring together a conference, as I look at it, sort of an experiment. Can we, as Christian people, bring in the brain skills we need, the presence of God that we need, and the, the group identity that we need? And so we need people who represent myself and my people and who I identify with. And for the first time, I think, ever, uh, Life Model Works is actually trying to gather some of these elements together and see if we can actually talk with each other about the traumas and the uh, uh, the contributors to racial division in the United States while staying connected in that Emmanuel space with God. And I have to say, this is really an experiment for, for our people. And so I'm really interested in in how this is going to turn out as first, but also, this is kind of like the first time we're really telling people in a you know a video announcement that we're going to create this e experiment together, and you know, I, you know, it's going to be new for all of us. But uh, the fun thing for me has been developing this format with you, and we had a long time we could talk about how you've already been testing elements of this where where you're living. Uh, we've been testing elements we are, but combining them just has me uh, very excited. Uh, not because the problem is so easy, but because <laughs> I think God really has a strong intention to try and solve this problem for us, to lead us through us. And So what do you have a sense about what God is trying to accomplish in, in transform and bringing us all together? You, you want to take a step with that first? Or? I will. I will. Okay. I, I'm so excited about the community that God is bringing to transform. Um, it, it's just reflective of the many times that you've said in your your work how our brains work better together, mm -hmm. how we build off of each other's energy. And it just speaks to the koinonia, right? The community of Christ. So I, I'm excited about that. Uh, I, I'm also excited about the ways in which the community of Christ is coming together to deal with the disease, the disease of racism, and to talk about it together. Usually conversations around race are either um, lots of data is thrown at people or it's spoken and talked about in separate groups. Well, here's a moment where the church becomes the center stage and we think together with each other uh, about the ways in which God wants to heal um, not just Americans, but everyone of any kind of discriminatory or prejudice types of experiences that lead to trauma. And so that, I think, is what God is, is moving, not just us, but the church He's calling the church to sort of address these unattended uh, wounds that are still uh, there that can totally be healed by the presence of Christ as he heals our brains together. I love that. I love that. And I, the only thing I would add is that as you were talking about those things that are, you know, the traumas there, you know, I'm reminded in um, the um, New Testament where we're told how Jesus is coming back for a bride without spot of blemish, you know, and I think about the traumas or the, the wounds. I mean, those are, those are in some ways, I think spots and blemishes. Um, but he's, but he's about the business of, of caring for that. Mm -hmm. And, um, 
as we talk about Transform 2023 and uh, just the church in general, I'm reminded of, of Isaiah 61, mm -hmm. where, you know, we get the proclamation of the Lord Emmanuel coming with us. And he's mm -hmm. coming here to uh, change hearts, to make things different, to uh, set those that are captives, to bring them liberty mm -hmm. and health and wholeness. And and I was reading that this morning a little bit, and I thought about <clears throat> one of the things in um, uh, the uh, Passion Translation mm -hmm. that Brian Simmons says in a commentary section when it talks about desolate places. I I think this is important here because in sixty one uh, uh, chapter sixty one verse four, one of the commentaries is. And I'm going to read it here. These desolate places can also point to areas in our lives that are broken and to spiritual truths that have been lost and forgotten for generations, which are now being recovered. Mm -hmm. and, and I really think that that's in what God is about. He's in, And I think Transform 2023 is, is part of that. Um, it's a part of this restoration that God wants to do throughout his body, but not just his body, not just his body. I'm talking about he he loves everybody. everybody. He <laughs> loves us all, you know. Right. And so I think Transform 2023 is 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 a key piece of that. And so we're I'm really excited yeah. about it. And you yeah. so hit on the awesome point, the love of God. I mean, we're not coming together just to have information, it, we're coming together to express God's love for us in so many ways. And one of those is healing our hearts. Yeah. So.